all who wanted to come. Uh, this is a, well, blue attack for dummies and dyslexics, <laughs> as you probably noticed. Uh, this is the other group. Uh, I especially commissioned Hans to, uh, to give, give this tutorial because I myself am confused if Luatech is for me or not and how to use it. So, uh, well, we'll see what Hans will make out of it. I'm sure he will do a good, great job, but whether I will still be a dummy or not, I don't know. Well, in fact, this is actually a private workshop for Yazi, and you are invited to, uh, to sit in. Um, because it's, it's kind of interesting to see that I've been doing this kind of talks for five, six years, still you have no clue what, uh, what Lua Tech is about, it seems. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you can foresee the, the result. Okay, so I can slightly make it more complex because uh, if I don't need to take you into account. Okay, um, Lua Tech for dummies. I will first just um, do a bit of talking and then I will do a bit of demoing and if you want you can, well, see if you can do the same thing on your machine. If you can, you can probably do it afterwards. Um, there are a couple of people here who can help you probably with getting the stuff ready. Okay, so one of, when we were discussing about what we should cover this afternoon, we came up with a couple of topics that should at least be addressed, so I will more or less go through them. Um, what exactly is Lua Tech? If you look at it from the tech perspective, it's, it, you can consider it to be basically PDF tech. So, if you think of tech as a binary, you can say, I run PDF tech on a file. You can equally well say, I run Lua Tech on a file, and you get output. There's no difference, it's behaving the same. And, um, well, it's just another engine. And switching to Lua Tech in that sense is, if you are that kind of user, not so much different from switching from Tech to ETech, to PDF Tech. It's just another engine, and depending on what market package you use, uh, it should probably work because the market packages normally are aware of what tech engine they run. But we went a step further. Um, if you look at the landscape of tech engines, there is say tech, which is a kind of successor e-tech, then there is PDF tech that produces PDF output, and in parallel, there has always been Omega, and its more robust uh, cousin, or whatever, Aleph. And that could not produce PDF, but produce still DVI files that could be used to produce PostScript. And Aleph is the engine that goes into two directions. Actually, it goes into multiple directions, but only a few directions made sense. Um, uh, like, like going up and down, down up, left, right, right, left. Um, that engine, I think it was never really stable. Uh, I'm not sure if it was even widely used. But one of the reasons for starting the... Well, we were basically starting out with an experiment of me and, and Hartmut and later Taco joined in. And then the Oriental Tech project, which is about types in Arabic, uh, became one of the contributors and then you need right to left type setting so right to left type setting was taken from Aleph and basically merged into the Lua Tech engine so then we, we started out with PDF Tech but it can do a bit more uh, at the same time you know the whole world is moved to Unicode so we moved to Unicode as well UTF input and also that bit was taken from, well basically, Aleph, because it already was Unicode aware. Um, however, if you used PDF there, over the time there had been a couple of 
small extensions that probably nobody used, but were part of experiments because PDF was basically the research vehicle of Hunter Tan. And at a, a similar fashion, Aleph was also always a bit experimental in what it provided. For instance, there was a, uh, some kind of hackery in the engine that made it possible to export uh, mass as mass ML. It never worked. It, it was there, it was basically dead code, doing nothing, crashing, whatever. I, I don't know if, if anybody even was aware of it, but so we removed all these ugly bits and pieces. It's exclusive for you to have eight. Uh, you can think of an engine as you can say, okay, maybe we can set up an engine to provide or support any kind of encoding, but it doesn't make sense to, to do that if the, the whole world is moving on to Unicode. And UTF-8, I think, is more or less de facto standard in that respect. Um, but already at that moment, we knew that if you want to move on, you have to move on to open type. And if you move on to open type, you also have to, uh, well, basically, adapt your mass machinery to the open type fonts, basically, the stuff that um, Microsoft developed. And that was an other, more or less important extension to the core machinery to, to, to be able to deal with mass uh, in the open type uh, way. Actually, I see that this font, this font has a, a funny kind of kerning. I don't know how this lectives... Hmm? Wow, it looks a bit funny curved on the... Maybe the font doesn't like even... Like I, I, I thought that this lectic thing worked only in the vertical. Okay. Um, of course, if we talk about a successor, we see it as a successor of traditional tech. There's always a discussion about what should go in there. Well, I still remember from all the discussions in the years before that it's basically a waste of energy. You know, I want something, you want something else. Not a, everybody wants something different. It's a waste of energy to try to get an agreement on that. Um, it's a bit the same as market package. Every user has different demands. Um, so we decided not to add any extensions to the engine, but instead to make it an extensible, configurable uh, machinery based on a core tech machinery. Okay, so that's the tech aspect. It's just an engine, a merge of PDF tech and ALEP, which can do a few more things. If you look at it from the Lua perspective, it's well, just a Lua engine. You can use Lua tech, it's the minus minus Lua only switch, and it just behaves like a Lua interpreter. That means that, and this is important in the perspective of tech distributions, that if you create additional tools, you can use Lua to do that. And if you install tech, you automatically have the scripting engine and all the stuff there that can be used to do all the additional tooling. In the past, especially if you are looking at context, context always came with management scripts, yeah, running uh, the, 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 the stuff needed to have a proper workflow. Uh, that needed, at some point, you needed to install Perl, later we moved into Ruby, so you had to install Ruby. That is a dependency that you actually don't want. Nowadays, all is used on Lua, so if you install tech, you basically have also your scripting environment there. So from the Lua perspective, it's just a Lua engine. It has the advantage of having some additional libraries on board, like the socket library, always available, Lua file system, which makes it possible to interact with the file system, some simple stuff like MD5, there is a Unicode library, which will actually be replaced because it's, it's not that useful in the sense that it uh, is now and actually we can kick out most of it because we only need a little bit of it. Um, the, there is the LPEG library, LPEG is, an, is a parser framework that will probably be, be part of Lua 5.3, but we have it as a standard library available. And there's a little bit more. 
So, as I already men mentioned, you don't even have to use tech. Just as this font somehow doesn't seem to have a, a code. But it reads just fine without the. Yeah. <laughs> because it probably that's should be removed at some point from the English orthography. The, the whole thing. <coughs> Because you know what it means. Just yeah. don't. <laughs> um, but it's also a little bit more. We have a tech machinery here, we have Lua there. And there is a communication channel between them. You can push things through the tech engine. And you can extend the tech engine with things in Lua. As we will see later. We now also enter the stage that we can extend the whole machinery, tech, or whatever, by using libraries, loading libraries. This is still very experimental. It will probably take another year for it to become really stable and usable because as with everything in the tech community, we have to be sure that it can be installed and reinstalled and keeps working and works on all the platforms and works the same on all the platforms. So, tech perspective, loop perspective, then there's the hybrid perspective. So you can, just to summarize this for you, yeah, for Jesse, you can, because one of your questions was actually from how should I see Lua, if you are just a tech user, you're not interested in Lua, you can see Lua tech as just a tech engine. If you're only interested in Lua, but are using tech, you can see Lua tech as an engine that has Lua scripting language on board, that can do some things like you can do some calculation, print something to tech. It, it will be used there, but that's the only relationship between the two. And now we also have the hybrid perspective. You can extend tech <coughs> using Lua. Now this is something that it sounds easier than it is. Because you need, of course, to know a little bit, a bit of tech. Um, the thing is, what we are doing is, we are opening up every little bit of tech. If you run a document, a file is read. So you can intercept everything that relates to reading this file. If the file, if, if the file is macros, the macros get expanded, tokenized, you can influence its tokenization. When it eventually ends up, ends up in basically a linked list of nodes and currents and glue and whatever kind of stuff, you can manipulate those lists. And if it then, in the end, is broken into lines, made into pages, turned into something PDF, you can influence all these steps by doing things with this intermediate representations of the output. In the end, everything will be opened up. There are still some areas that are not really opened up. Again, if you are just a user, you never see anything of that. The market package will do some things, might use some of these features, or misuse some of these features. So again, users can use the tech. The market package can do all kinds of clever things, but the, the user only sees Lua as well, an additional language to do things with in the perspective of tech. Developers they can go and go really deep into the engine. They can, let's say, take, say that there's somebody input is there, you have the somehow internal representation of what a parent is going to be. You can manipulate every bit and piece of it and, and, and do whatever you like. The thing there is, of course, you need to know what tech is and how the internals work. If you don't know anything about tech, if you don't know how the internals are working, forget about it. It takes time to learn it, to invest in it, probably you need to be aware a bit what happens at the tech end before you can happen, know what happens at the lower end. But you can go to very large, you can read very large, interesting results. I think it's pretty safe to say that the average user will just depend on what the macro package will provide. That's the safest bet. So don't think that you leave this room and can manipulate tech in all aspects and do the great things because in practice the tech that you're running is doing a lot of things in it in, in it in, in relationships and whatever. I will mention some more about it later. 
complications. Now imagine that you want to extend there. That you say I have the I have this paragraph and I want to do a better job of breaking it into lines, for instance. The thing is that what exactly is at that level a paragraph? You enter a couple of, of characters, the characters get linked into a list, and each character has an associated font and points to a slot in the font. Okay, this still sounds simple because it's pretty close to what we are normally seeing, but the thing is that in order to get that file, to get this what we call a node to represent a character and a font, you need a font system. Yeah, you need a way to tell the whole machinery that it has to load a font and at some point associate characters with fonts. And in order to typeset, let's say, a file, the whole system needs to be aware of its environment, where to pick up the file and what to do with the file. If you are using some structure like chapter or whatever, there has to be macro definitions that, that turn this chapter into something that is maybe typeset in a bold way and has a number or whatever. So it's always part of a bigger system. It's never something small. Um, in the rest of this afternoon, I will mostly use plain tech because, well, Poland is plain tech, heaven or hell, depends a bit on what you, how you want to look at it. Um, the plain tech, even plain tech, is doing things for you already uh, that you as a user maybe don't even want to be bothered with. But no matter how you look at it, it's always part of a bigger whole. You cannot expect to mess around in this part of tech and not influence that part of tech. There's always some kind of relationship. Uh, this means that if you talk about supporting uh, uh, Lua thing or Lua tech specific extension thing, in a, in a controlled way, you're probably going to use some kind of ecosystem. Later provides a sort of ecosystem for that. Context provides an ecosystem okay, you, where you can hook in your code, do your patching or manipulating or whatever. Maybe they even create a special user space where you can mess around without this whole other machinery, the font system, the file system, whatever, being damaged. Yeah, you can just go on and play with it. I'm not going to answer all the questions in, in this respect, but I know how, how it has done in context, so I can tell you a bit about that if you are interested in that. Um, there's one problem. Now, even if you tell users that they should be careful if they want to have some kind of controlled behavior and not end up in situations where they will stare at the screen, don't know what happened. Yeah. Do users, do techies want to be controlled? My experience is that this is in many cases not the case in the sense that they, if they can mess around, they will mess around. You know, there's nothing that, if you look at traditional tech, there's nothing that prevents a tech user from not redefining the, the chapter command. So if you redefine the chapter command and you have some <coughs> styles that somehow expect chapter command to behave in a certain way, you can be sure that it does work anymore. And the same is true for Lua. If you start messing with the fire builder, you shouldn't be surprised if other things stop working because there can be some dependency between the subsystems. <coughs> um, this is more like a warning. Yeah? Of course, you are invited to do anything you want and extend anything you want with the Lua tech, but don't be surprised if there are side effects. So back to the development team, this is why we only provide mechanisms. There's the basic mechanisms that are there. You can hook in your code, you can do all kinds of things that I will show. And that's as far as we go. Don't bother us with, it's not working. Well, if you don't do anything, it's working. So if it's not working, you've done something wrong. Future. Um, as I told you, we don't extend the core engine. So what does it mean? It means that, for instance, open type support is not hard-coded in the engine. The whole idea is that you can 
write it yourself. So, Open Type Support is written in Lua, and it's of course because Lua Tech Project is closely related to Context. It's part of Context, but at the same time, the code is made generic in a way that it can be used in LaTeX and PlainTeX as well. So, although we officially don't support extensions, this is one of the things that we provide. And you can use it or write your own stuff if you want to do a better job. In principle, I can make many, many more generic modules. I'm not sure if I should do it. It's a lot of work. If people don't use them, it's a waste of work. And knowing techies, they will always want to do it differently. So, why should I? bother myself with that. Uh, but it's still something I'm thinking about. You now Context is a big monolithic system. I'm still thinking of making a layered system alongside it, what I call MetaTag, where you can say I want to have this kind of features and functions and support and whatever, I can more or less define my own macro package that uses DND snippets and this has this kind of infrastructure and whatever. And that might as well serve some time. But okay, it's, as I already mentioned, it's never an isolated system. You have languages, fonts, file systems, whatever. They somehow go together and you, you, you can't take one component and expect the other one to work. Okay, in this workshop, uh, I'll show several things. One of them is, well, just using Lua, because that's what most users will probably do. I may be different, but if I would ask how many people are going to write their own open type processing machinery here, okay, there's one there, but it's not the majority of this, uh, of this content. Um, I can show some of the hooks. The hooks are the things that the developers are going to um, probably do use to have the additional thingies. I can show some of that. I can answer questions, so if you have questions you can ask, ask, ask them or in the end or sometimes maybe just when they pop up and you think it's the right moment just, just, just ask them. That's about the most I can do. Okay. So, say that you want to run LuaTech. Um, as, I, as I said, it's probably most people, it, that is my experience in, in Poland, uh, try, uh, you, you use plain tech, maybe use LaTeX, I'm not sure about. But, uh, so I will stick to plain tech because that's, uh, well, I don't, I, I'm not saying I know a lot about plain, but on the other hand, there's not so much to know about plain. So. I know probably enough to, to be able to show it. Um, if you want to make a LuaTeX format, it's just the same as PDFTeX or CTEX or whatever. LuaTeX minus minus PD plain done. Yeah? This will make you a plain tech format. You can try it on your system if you, if you have it available. And then if you run a file, it can be a simple <coughs> file, test, backslash, end. You can then run the file with do it at minus minus format equals plain, whatever file dot there. In the context distribution, there is um, a script, MTX run, which is the normal runner of any script in context, that you can actually also use to generate the format, this is the command that you give, it will put it in the right spot, because in a tech tree the problem is always that the format has to go to the right spot. In the latest context distribution this script is there. And then you run it this way. You can even go a bit less plain. Uh, by the way, there's a typo in here. You should actually. Oh no, this, this, will, this, this will probably work out well in. Yes, yeah, because it's default. 
I didn't in the previous. Here I specifically told that you use tech format plain, which is plain dot tech. Yeah. Here I don't tell it. Here the script will use a slightly different variable plane called lower tech dash plane. And lower tech dash plane loads a couple of things. It has always been part of the complex distribution. I don't know how many users ever saw it or used it. It will use it will load the open type font handler so that you can um, process open type fonts and features and things like that. Again, you could also do it in a verbose way. Luatech minus minus ini, Luatech plane, Luatech dash plane, return, and then you, then you get also form. But you, the, the thing is, you have to move the form to the right spot here, yeah, because it, for some reason in the tech infrastructure, format generation is somewhat crippled in the sense that it will never move the file to the right spot. You have to do that manually. This script will do it for you. Okay, on Windows you can copy this and then have just a command plane or whatever. If you are willing to go a bit beyond plane, you can just run contact on your file and do all kinds of similar things that I will show here. But then, of course, there's a danger that you spoil the basic machinery that's there. Because if you think that you can do a better job than what gets done there, well, fine, but be aware of the fact that the whole system, of course, can depend on some features that you have just disabled. Okay. So let's move on to the, to the real thing. In this, in this uh, tutorial, I will also tell a little bit about what the consequence is for, let's say, coding at the tech level. This is a bit also for Jasko, who wanted to know how you do math in plain tech. I made it for you, it's there. Um, but I can show you that later, how, how the, the dirty details work. I think it's good. Maybe you are not interested in this kind of stuff, but on the other hand, if you're sitting here and know, want to know what the word is about, maybe, maybe it's nice to see it for once. The plain tech format looks like this. If you start a tech engine, it doesn't know anything. Well, it, do, it does know what the backslash is, because otherwise you couldn't even get started. So, on the top of the file, you see commands like this. It sets up all kinds of special meanings for characters, cut codes. Let's move down. Here it's setting up a couple of special characters. I don't know how many people are aware of that. But this whole range, yeah, till here, only makes sense on Don Knut's keyboard. So if you would do something sure. like Control L on his keyboard, or whatever, you would get this character. Probably it only used to make sense <laughs> in the 1980s or so when Don Hughes was working on a particular, particular uh, keyboard. Stack on machine with this uh, keyboard expression. Same stack for either way. Yeah. I actually wonder what happens if you would put a if you put a control, so if you put a control L in your file, you get an apparel. In Mac. In, 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 in mouse mode, yeah. In, in files, uh, another. Well, in, in mouse mode, yeah. The, well, actually, it's a mouse character. If you would do it in tech mode, you would get an error. Yeah. So in tech mode, mode is new page, I think. Uh, yes, Ctrl L, uh, yeah, Ctrl L, this one is an exception. Let them take Ctrl R, yeah. Ctrl R doesn't have a meaning in tech mode. So. You will get an error in tech mode if you do this one. I don't know how many people are aware of this fact. <laughs> that there is this, this whole list of experts. In a similar fashion, in the traditional tech forms, there are some rather interesting pseudo ligatures. I think combining space with some characters will give other characters. The thing is, normal tech is never uses space in that sense, but so it will, you will never see a space in the, in the input because it becomes a glue. But 
technically there are all kinds of this small things going on there that features that we have carried on for years because so you see them back in the encodings and in the AFM files and whatever nobody's ever using them okay this is more like the existing stuff mass codes del codes this is also defining mass now if you look at these thingies this is all 8-bit based yeah and the other thing is this way of coding is a way of telling Tech that it has to get some kind of character, it's some kind of property from a specific family, mass family, and mass family gets associated with fonts. Now why do I show this? Because in Lua Tech, if you use the traditional tech fonts, it will just work. If you move on to open type, you can forget about it because it's 32 bits, has all the stuff in different places, maybe <coughs> even load different uh, families and other things. All these definitions don't make sense. <coughs> but okay, some people want to use plain with Lua Tech. <laughs> well, officially my answer would be, okay, go ahead, but forget 50% or more of plain, because it doesn't make sense in Lua Tech. Not in the way it is defined in plain. You end up <coughs> with redefining plain basically. <coughs> Take this whole section. And all these counters here. <coughs> Allocators for counters, dimmons, skips, whatever. In Tech, there are 256 registers. In LuaTech, we have 65,000 65, of them. So again, if you say new count, new count, new count, after, yeah, if you have done that 265 times, then you, you get an error message, basically. Well, on the other hand, LuaTech <coughs> could still go on because it has more registers. But Plain tech doesn't have it. On the other hand, you could say, forget about patching it. You don't need to patch it. If you're a plain user, you are just accustomed to having no more than 255 characters. Why should you expect more? Yeah? If you expect more, I'd say move on to another system. Yeah? Okay, so these are all the ugly definitions that relate to that. This is still usable. These are defaults, they didn't change. The defaults are still the same. <coughs> well, this is maybe for some people it looks familiar. Okay, here we get to the section of fonts. So what we do here is loading computer model. It's not even loading Latin model. It's using the fact that you sometimes get Latin model can be a side effect of the map files mapping the name let's say CMR5 onto LMR5, yeah, so that you do get the LAMP fonts. But if you are a, a real addicted plain user, you will not benefit from any of the latest development anyway. This works if you load plain in LuaTech, you run a file, you get output, it works because these fonts are defined. I'm not saying it makes sense to use them because if at the same time you want to use the latest, greatest tech, uh, the Goose, uh, Goose People's uh, uh, LM fonts, yeah, you really have to do something about this. Yeah. Just to mention one of these details, does, does somebody know what this means? These two lines? The client but not available. Yeah, what does it mean? Since it's low. Loaded and uh, right. dumped into yeah, they are dumped in the format. Again, this dates from the time that the systems were not that fast. It really doesn't make any sense in these times. Yeah, you get a bigger format. If you don't use the font, well, time is spent on initializing. Yeah. And the interesting thing is, of course, the preloaded further on is relaxed, and you cannot even hear it's made undefined again. So they're really inaccessible, but at least they are, let's say, preloaded. This is one of the things that if you see it for the first time, you really scratch your head. Well, what's happening here? Why is it? Why is it done? If you don't know that that font basically is loaded and dumped in the format, you are really not aware of what is happening here. Yeah? So if you would use LuaTech with new fonts, this whole section that we just saw doesn't make sense. Okay, here we get mass. Yeah, the same is true for mass. Mass is mapping on these fonts. So if we want to redefine mass. Well, you have to redefine the whole lot here. This kind of stuff is still supported. 
but it might be that you use different characters and different code points. This is all just basic tech. Nothing different here in Lua tech and <coughs> okay. I have no clue. Yeah. The case from Lamis. The case from Lamis using this stuff. There's even item and item item and there's a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Well, if you, you if you read a textbook and expect the things to be there, you probably say, okay, there's a begin section. These are characters, yeah. Okay, these still make sense, but these, for sure, if you use an open type font, are not sitting in these slots, yeah. You you get unexpected results if you do that. But actually, if you use UTF-8, this whole section doesn't make sense anymore. Some would claim that this should be redefined and that you may not use the main tech. Makes sense. <coughs> when I was looking last week at the plain format to see how I could, what are the things that I should redefine in order to make Jasko happy, um, I thought what to do is the accent. So I said, wait a minute, one of the things you can do is you can basically swap it. You can say, if I have, um, let's say this one, the yeah, something with the erasers. It should be technically possible to say you, have, you swap it, you hash one, and let it be followed by the combining uh, the erasers. The fact is that in Latin modern, the combining the erasers doesn't have the, the, the zero width, so it fails. So it would buy trick. This is still okay. Here we get another bunch of definition, all kind of mass size. Well, you can bet that these are not sitting in these slots in an open ties mask Useless. Unless you use a traditional mask So as soon as you choose to move on with the fonts to the open type mask fonts and open type LM fonts in general, you have to redefine all these characters. And they go on and on and on. Yeah. All kind of hard-coded numbers here. Oh gosh, more hard-coded numbers. Oh, this supposedly work. Radical, actually it might work. This is still pretty basic, that you don't need to change that kind of stuff. Okay, and we are nearly done. Yeah, there's not much special going on there. This is just plain tech. Maybe these things are by now outdated. This stuff, of course, is different. We still use hyphenation patterns, but normally you will have more languages, more stuff that can be loaded. It doesn't hurt to load the stuff, it doesn't take any time. And then, of course, as soon as you start patching, you should also patch this kind of thing because you, if you change one line, it's no longer plain. <coughs> yeah, so I hope it's clear now that if you move on to Lua Tech, and the same would be true for CTech, by the way, <coughs> is, and you use, for instance, open type text and mass fonts, that you cannot use plain the way it is if you also want to use these new features. Okay. I run it from the editor because then I have a preview, preview cycle. If in, in let's say, in, an, in a tech document, you if you have context in the system, the latest version, and you put it on top of your file, you should basically run plain tech. Let's see what happens if I run it. Yeah, I get the word test. And this inputs the, the plain text format. I've prepared a couple of examples. I've put them here so that you don't see them all at the same time. But it's handy for me to cut and paste them.
Okay, you now see that there is an exclamation mark there. So where does it come from? It comes from this command. Direct Lua and I print something to tech. So if you are a user who doesn't want to extend the engine yourself, but you want to benefit from Lua, you can stick to this command. Do all kinds of things in Lua. And if needed, print something back to tech. Hmm? Of course, this, this one doesn't make much sense, but you can print back something like... Yeah, I now get... Six here. Yeah which is 2 times 3. So you can do some calculations, print stuff to tech, yeah. So, so, so this, is, this is some Lua object called tech, uh, to whom you uh, give method print of, uh, with argument, which is some Lua object, uh, namely here to uh, start free. Yes. Well, this is a this is an, an, an expandable command, so it will be directly expanded. Yes. Yeah. In directly in expanded in tech. In tech. Yeah. Yes. But this uh -huh. will it will take it will tokenize this basically, so it will also expand macro setter in there. Yeah. Uh, and pass everything that comes out there to Lua. Ah, yes. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. Then Lua will turn it into a function technically and run it. Yeah. So. Okay. In in, if you take the short the shortcut, you can say this is a blob of Lua code that gets executed immediately. But okay, so so but but I can I can uh, make this this okay. Yeah, and tech we have the tech namespace. So if you look at the Lua manual, you won't see tech. If you look at the Lua tech manual, you will see that there is a namespace tech, which has a couple of functions, and print is one of those functions. So basically you can say tech is a library, you can look at it that way, which has a print function that prints something to the tech engine. If you want to, to know the really gory details, you should go to the Lua tech manual, where it explains all kinds of nasty things like how to deal with cut codes, side effects, special characters, things like that. Yeah? But that's a bit beyond, beyond today, because if, you, if, you, if I would start talking about cut codes here, the half of the room would run empty, and, uh, and the other half of the room would say, okay, I don't understand anything. Well, maybe if they do understand cut codes, yeah, they, they, they would still probably not understand anything, but they should play with it and spend an afternoon fighting cut codes, and then they would know what happens. Yeah? Because it, uh, they typically think lots of trial and error will show you the way, I would say. Um, now you can imagine that if I do this, now, what will happen if I do this? I get an error. You know, no missing dollar in uh, yeah, So, how do I get a real dollar there? Yeah, that's a different story. I can do this. Of course. And then I will get a one. In Still a file open. Yeah, I get a one type it in mouse mode yeah, because I now did the right thing. So this is this is not so different from tech itself. If if in tech itself you don't know how tech interprets characters, you will have the same problem in, in when when you print from Lua to tech. Yeah, you can, but you you can. You can more or less say, tech is in, the, in, the, in some kind of mode where it fetches stuff from the input. Mm -hmm. yeah? So if this is your input, what happens is, is that the direct Lua command executes Lua code and injects it into the input. It puts it there into the input okay. and tech starts interpreting it. So, so, uh, it, so the... So the uh, direct Lua uh, commands output uh, would be uh, in particular uh, tokenized? Yes, it gets tokenized. Yeah. Okay, so, uh -huh. it, it, you know, it, it, you can see it as tech is reading T, E, S, T, space, 
<coughs> and then it sees dark blue, so it starts expanding that. Yes. But it picks up the argument. It tokenizes it. Yes. So, so it ends up tokenized at in the tech internal. So, but so if you so if you so if you type uh, percent site after the one, uh, then the second word test uh, shall not be uh, typeset. Or you get even nastier things. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> File and it when. Eh? You get that kind of messages. Because it completely uh. confuses the internal machinery, because it sees basically an end of line or uh. end of file or whatever you mode you are. So you should be careful in that, in that kind of stuff. Yeah. It can, be, can sometimes be confusing if you are using this kind of stuff and you. Because, you but, but it's. You know, if you do this kind of things, you're like, oh, well, well, that's not going to work the way you want, yeah? because because the percent is it, it is basically put off yes, each other. You have, so first first you should have a macro that expands to uh, percent uh, yeah, to you char percent to char percent to put it after this uh, one digit. Then then it okay. Thanks. Yeah yeah. You have to basically you have to make a macro that has the yes. that gives you the percent in. Yes, in the, in the input, in the Lua yeah, yeah, input. Yeah. In the, in so what happens in if you talk about context or later, yeah? No, if you talk about context, yeah, this is a context file, yeah? I have a command, Lua start Lua code. Uh -huh. Now I can say, This will run. Oh, this actually won't run. Sorry, I'm cheating. I'm now in Lua mode. And in Lua, this is not an this is an operator. This is the command sign. Okay. Yeah? So now it runs. Uh -huh. yeah. It runs because Lua. but but it's, it's special so 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 Lua Tech has special mode which is uh, Lua mode, or is it just the specifics of context? No, no, Lua this context. is the Lua engine permits you to do anything you want. You can change cut codes, whatever you like, but but the only command that Lua Tech provides is direct Lua. If you want something more, you wrap your own code around it. <coughs> so, 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 but, but I, I've heard uh, now, tech, now Tech is in Lua mode. Tech is, tech, no, tech is not so much in Lua mode. Tech is, you know, if, if you look at this command, this one, Tech sees this sequence of tokens, basically it tokenizes it. So it has a bunch of tokens, internal, a token list basically. But direct Lua tells Tech that it should pass this to Lua and process it. So the first thing that Lua Tech does is detokenize the stuff into yes. something that of goes course. to Lua, turns it into a string. <coughs> Lua <coughs> interprets this and executes it. And if the result is a print, yeah, then the tech print will print something to tech where it gets tokenized again. Yeah, so it's like like blah blah blah. Some kind of command which gets input that gets tokenized, that does something or doesn't do something, that's also possible. It doesn't necessarily give something back. When and then when we are, when we are Back at the tech end, it will continue. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So you can say it, it kind of escapes to Lua, do something, and comes back. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and and uh, the phrase, the phrase, did I did I misunderstood the phrase Lua mode, or or you introduce or you? No, no, there is no Lua mode. Okay. You know, not in the sense of mode. Okay. It, it as, no. you can say it escapes to Lua, do okay. something, and comes uh -huh. back. Okay. You know, it would be the same. You know, there is in, in this maybe you know immediate write eighteen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you do uh, that, yes, yeah. Uh -huh. If you do yes, that, uh, yes, you I execute a program it. and you come back. And yes. the same is here. You execute something, you come back. But it happens that what you execute happens inside there, mm -hmm. so it permits you to print something back. Yes. To yes. Yeah? Uh -huh. Okay. So this is this is the probably one of the applications that people can can use, even if they don't want to use anything else special of Lua there. They can still use some of the benefits of having Lua on board. Yeah? So, uh, this one is appended to the 
that inputs the input. Yeah, it ends up, so it ends up here. So this is the same as It basically ends up like this. Yeah. The direct law prints are one back. Okay. Now say that you want to do something more. Leaving? No, just having my personal, advi by personal uh, advice. But you filled in your membership form? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it said the first document he taps that says Cabez and Indian. So. No, uh, in Slovenia. <laughs> okay. In French. In French. Oh. Okay. I don't know how many of you know. Lua or how to code in Lua, um, but this is how, for instance, a little bit of Lua looks like. I can do this. I can print. I can run this command. Well, let's do it a bit more readable. It's like the handicap by the fact that I'm, you have to use plane. Yeah. Um, as a function, we place euros. String gsub is a Lua function, a regular Lua function. So I get a string buffer. In buffer, I replace every occurrence of euro by euro. Yeah. So this is test. I call replace euro. That's one euro. And what I get back if I print it, just print it to the screen, not test print, but print. I get one euro. Yeah. Is this clear? So say that I want to benefit from that, this function in Lua there. There's something like in, in Lua there, like callbacks. The callback is basically you escape from there to Lua. But the callback is you don't call it yourself, it's done automatically. And there are quite some callbacks. In the LuaTeX manual, which you can find in the LuaTeX website and in the SVN repository, you can find all the possible callbacks. And this is one of them, process input buffer. So the input buffer is what we just saw, test, whatever, test. That somehow ends up in the input buffer. So say that, let's first run this thing. Enter this text. Mm. And I get this. So why is this? Is it because, well, I registered a callback. So now when BlueTech is going to read a line from the input, which ends up in the input, it's first going to pass this text to this function and it does something this function does something with it and it is supposed to return a string or nothing can afford to return nothing then, then the string is lost so you can use this kind of trickery to manipulate your input if you want but I will must match in one line if you break into, into two lines oh, one word if you Right, just uh, uh, percent uh, new line. 
Yeah. Ja, doesn't work this. Why doesn't it work? Mm. In what sense? Yeah. Oh, percent is wrong in second line. Can you come just see it here? So, so it, so it, so this, so this registered uh, buffer uh, uh, looks at the at the input before tokenization. Yes, uh -huh. that read basically line by line. Yes. yes so uh -huh. that, that's uh -huh. okay. Is and the new line still back? No. Tech doesn't have like a new line. There's no new line there. Well, you can it in the file. Yeah, you don't, have any, the you don't have any tech. Tech, basically tech, uh, in fact, this is the input buffer, so what tech does it, it, it reads till it's something that is the end of the line, strips off the end of the line, and the percent basically ends, ends to, in this case, commence and ends the reading, so it strips it, so it's welcome to you, yeah, that's where it stops. That is passed into the input. There are callbacks that do something with files. So if you want to do it, I can show it later. Well, I can show it. Well, it's a bit early. I wanted to show that later, how you can do it with files. <laughs> you know, the thing is, you should be aware that this happens. Because if I do this, what, what, what's, what will happen? Yes. Back to the file, I will find it. It will be back to no. This is okay. It this is, uh, so far, uh, so far, okay. But but uh, backslash backslash euro sign is also defined. Uh, uh, also makes the same. Okay. Yes. Because because there is uh, the the, the okay. file file process the the the, 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 the tokens processed by tag yeah. by final tag. Do not yeah. contain uh, the word euro. They contain yeah. just euro. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right so, yeah. So, so this is a, a trick question. Yeah. <laughs> As you said. <laughs> you know, it, it, it works because, it, of course, it would be different if you use, if you really want to have the word euro there. Let's say, and you really want the word euro there, you have troubles. You have to find. But yes. of course, you can in tech, you can do something like this. Or yes. yes. Yeah, you can, you can try to cheat a little bit so that it cannot be fine. The thing is, you should be aware of the fact that it can have side effects. Yeah? And if you are processing arbitrary files, well, you never know if the word euro ends well, up there in some kind of way that you don't want it to be. Well, the, the, I don't think it's side effect, it's just uh, it's consequent. It's, it's just, uh, just uh, low price. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a surprise no, in the it's sense of, but, uh, from the user's perspective, it's a side effect in the sense that if yes, he wants to replace at some point all the slot is by euros. Yeah, <laughs> he should be aware. Yes, that yes maybe. But, but this this example is uh, that kind of perversity that you uh, find uh, many times in the original tech. So uh, yeah, okay. Tr treat it. Please treat it as a compliment. Yeah, okay, you're <laughs> basically not finding me. No, the, the, the thing is that, you know, how many, let's say, normal tech users who do this, who do this kind of programming in tech, they probably are aware of this issue, but I'm st basically still talking about the simple things you can do with Lua Tech, uh -huh. and that could be a completely different audience. That could be the audience that never wants to touch a macro, but is willing to touch Lua code. So, so. And for them, it comes as a surprise because, oops, you know, they, they, don't, they, they don't see this, they don't see this as a, as, as Euro, they see this as a well, command, yeah, or something uh -huh. like that. 